What is up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to talk about how I've passed my professional data engineering examination, my overall journey through it. Uh, it took me around like one and a half to two months for preparation. So I'm going to give a small walkthrough on how and what I used for my preparation in detail. There are quite a few guides out there on how to pass the exam, but either they're kind of outdated or they have too many recommendations within it. In this video, I'm going to do like a three step preparation method, which I followed personally to pass the exam. Also stay tuned till the end of the video to know how you can give the exam for free without paying the $200 fee. First, let's talk about how does the exam looks like. Uh, in general, the exam has total 50 questions. You get 120 minutes to solve these questions. Also, there is no negative marking. Best to answer all the questions in together. So yeah, the course is like wide because in terms of it has a lot more services to deal with, but the depth is not as much. So there's a kind of a certain flow to the exam where it follows some kind of trend and it helps you answer the questions. Why do you even need the certificate in the first place? One point would be gaining skill sets. To clear the exam in the first place, you would need to know these underlying different Google Cloud technologies. And the second point would be showcasing your skill set. There are many ways to showcase your skill set. One could be building a portfolio website with all these different projects. Uh, the other option is like this, having a certificate authenticated by Google in place to show that you have the knowledge on what it takes to be a Google Cloud Data Engineer. It also means that you've gone through the trouble of understanding data engineering in general in Google Cloud and have learned a lot of these different services along the way. This then becomes very good to show to a potential employer or even within an organization to get your ways. Moving on to the main part, I would like to share my three step method to pass the exam. So step one is preparation. As part of my preparation, I did two main courses. One was the data engineering learning path from Quick Labs. That's from Google itself. It consists of around four main courses and then like a few skill badges you need to attain. It's good to do the course if you're very new to Google Cloud and you don't know things at all. Uh, you can skim through it if you're quite familiar with all these different data engineering services. In my case, I was I was skimming through some certain parts of it, but uh, I would say it's really beneficial to at least do the whole thing together. It gives a general idea how the Google Cloud looks like. Towards the end of this data engineering track, there's one last course, which is kind of focused on the preparation for the exam itself. And that's the main part, uh, I would say, in this course, which kind of covers how the exam questions are going to look like, what kind of things we will be focused on. As an example, I already mentioned Dataflow was like one of the main part of the exam. The exam wants to, the users to know how and where to use Dataflow in the right way. So it kind of tests you on that a lot. But there are a lot of sample questions within part of this course. So it's definitely a plus to complete this course before and I would say a couple of times before you give the exam. The second part of my preparation was this A Cloud Guru course by Tim Berry. Uh, for Google Cloud Data Engineering Certificate. So yeah, the, this course was really helpful, at least for my preparation. The course is very structured for the exam itself. I would say if you have less time, you can skip the main part. Uh, you can skip the previous course on Quick Labs by Google Cloud or Coursera. You can just do this one. It takes around like $30, $40 for, for a month's membership. I, I would say you can complete in one month's time. It took me 10 days. Uh, the structure of the course was very useful. It also has labs, hands-on labs. So it's, if, even if you skip this previous course, you will always have the hands-on experience as a part of this course. I can show you a demo of how the course looks like. So yeah, the course in general is very interesting and it's very uh, structured in a way, as, as I mentioned. So as you can see, this, the chapter three is directly in storage and databases, covers all aspects of storage and databases as a part of the exam. It also covers some labs. The flow is very straightforward in terms of learning. Then it goes about also discussing the big data open source ecosystem. Actually, this is what this was not part of the data engineering learning track pre in the Google's course. So this, I would say this is very important because a lot of the questions are actually targeted around on migration from these existing open source ecosystem to Google Cloud technologies. So it's best to have a knowledge around all these and have kind of notes around it. Similarly, cloud data flow was one of the most important part. Uh, this chapter makes quite a justice to the cloud flow data flow concept here. I would say the previous course did not have a lot there. And this is very straightforward and very specific for the preparation of the exam. Definitely go through the exam tips of cloud data flow. So yeah, uh, apart from that, there are all these different services. Uh, the, chap the main services have a chapter for themselves itself. For example, cloud data proc, big table, big query, data lab, 
and then composer and many more and then there are like machine learning concept kind of shows towards the end of the uh, course so yeah uh, I would definitely say uh, follow the whole course and then towards the end of the course there's the final chapter 20 which is which is preparation for the Google exam this is very useful in a way that it kind of guides you how the exam is going to look like and gives you different resources in refreshing the concepts the preparation is very important especially if you don't have much experience in working with Google Cloud so moving on to the next step of the three step method I'm doing the next step is preparing the notes or like a documentation repository you can always come back and refresh the concepts refresh the theoretical concepts here so I would like to share my notes in a way and give a brief snapshot on how you can go about it uh, for my case I use notion specifically I mean love with the tool and the flexibility it gives you and having the notes in a in single place all right as an example I wanted to show a few things within my notes and the document structure and how it looks like uh, one of the key things is uh, I've separated it into modules uh, different modules like pipelines databases viz machine learning are all in separate tabs and within those I have the services in place for example in pipelines I have IoT core data prep uh, pops up data flow data product etc I also have a four word description which I copied from a Google repository I link that in below in the in my description so yeah within PubSub I have the, these different concepts and advanced PubSub concepts I'm, I'm laying down all these details as I go through the lessons from a cloud guru so the idea is you kind of prepare what you think is important a bit more comprehensive on the details you can just skip all these details and have the main points in place uh, for me it kind of helps me go back go into things and look at uh, the details here so yeah that's mostly it this kind of documentation repository is good to have you always want to go back and refresh even towards like one day before the exam I was always going back and forth uh, refreshing the concepts moving on to step three which is giving the mock exam I think that's the most important part of the whole th three step process if you have even shorter time if you have just a few weeks I would just say that just do the mock exam try to do as many rounds of mock exam as you can uh, there are a few places where you can find the exams primarily use three different uh, websites for it the first one was a cloud guru uh, you, as a part of the final um, course uh, there's a mock exam present there and that's uh, that mock exam is pretty nice in a way that uh, the questions are very comparable to what comes in the actual exam you can give it as many times as you want so it's the the interface is very uh, similar to how a real exam is going to look like I think I did it like three to four times uh, the a cloud guru mock exam the final track of quick labs there's a preparation uh, course uh, which has a little list of sample questions and mock questions within that so you can use it uh, for example the questions are going to look like this um, the sample exams a lot, a lot have a lot of questions within it so you can have a real walkthrough there it has the answers and the explanations as well uh, within the data engineering track they also have a list of sample questions it's it's more like a Google questionnaire form well the questions are very useful uh, you can just go there and hop on and see uh, try to do them at least two times it really helped because the questions are very similar in the actual exam there uh, this and then there's like one last I prepared from was a different site called exam topics uh, there are multiple sites with exam papers and questions you can always go there and try to prepare for this uh, please note the solutions are always not correct so always hop on into the discussion of exam topics to see what is correct and what is not so yeah the best way would be try to give the mock exam as much as you can and then once you uh, get a result and you get incorrect questions the best thing is to always hop back on your notes on and the documentation portal you created and note the, que note the question and try to figure out the answers of these questions from your notes if you got value out of this video definitely hit the subscribe button to my channel and like this video it really helps with the algorithm really helps me promote the channel to people like you if you made it this far thanks a lot for watching the video I would like to share in the detail how I got to give the exam for free there's a catch to it though uh, the, uh, so the organization you need to be involved with must be a Google Cloud partner so you can earn these Google Cloud vouchers for examination so the way I did it I went to quick labs I completed a few assignments email partner.googlecloud.com on it and you can check if your organization is a Google Cloud partner and they can give you in the details what a track to complete to attain a Google Cloud voucher the certification voucher which will uh, let you give the exam for free if you're new to my channel definitely subscribe to it and hit the like button on this video if you gain value out of it thanks a lot for watching see you in the next one